Welcome to Shift Watch. I'm your host, Starbuck. It's been a crazy week dimensionally where I finally gained some clarity on codes I've been carrying. Thanks in large part to Lily Nova who came along with one other authentic soul who will reveal the truth behind the activations I'm causing. Next, to highlight the extreme weather conditions we've been experiencing due to the solar influence, here is a tornado cell that wreaked havoc over a large swath of Iowa. The drone footage was a perspective I'd never seen before. Then after a series of circumstances, that led me to call out for some of my higher being colleagues to appear, the Salarians in particular. I was able to record the activity to share with others. And finally, the acclimation of some new energies that started during the Rebels of Disclosure Conference are still in my prevailing winds. One brilliant response from Jackie Kenner regarding starseeds manifesting abundance kept coming to mind. And so I'll close this shift watch with Jackie's answer during the closing speaker panel. Lily came along when she was supposed to. And I'm going to set the stage here because what, what I've learned about Lily, and there's one other person that factors greatly into what I'm going to share right now. Back in 2022, I had a transmission unsolicited from Yegumaya. From those of you that know who she is are familiar with her work. And this was the third of such, where during this transmission, it was clear that there was an exchange between me and higher aspects. And clearly throughout, there was something that I was given that I was to carry, instructed at the time that it took place, that um, it wasn't the time for it to blossom. That time will come, um, but they didn't specify what. Along the journey I've had here now, I've come to know the difference between authentic people in this community and those that aren't. And I really gravitate to those that do because there's a quality in them that you just know these people are connected to things beyond themselves. Lily is one of those. And I say that because I watch the work that she does and the people that she's drawn and my connections because we have a common thread and Pleiadians, all that aside, Lily is authentic. And there's nothing that she needs from me. She carries on the way that she carries on. There's one other person within the last week that came along that had the same characteristics, should we say. I met um, Carol, who goes by Reverend Carol, by the way. She's been around this metaphysical, spiritual community for decades. I met her through Tim and Julie. And when you met her, she just carries the demeanor that she's no nonsense. She knows what she knows. But once you're around her enough, you know she's connected to. Without question, I respect her aura because I feel what she's connected to and she's authentic. So when she reached out to me in the same way that she did, <laughs> my perception is that she's got what she needs and she can instruct me on some things to connect. When she reached out and said, there was something that you said that connected me and do you work with people? And if you do, I want more. Now, who says that? <laughs> given the nature of who I thought that they were. What am I carrying that's so important that we need to get to the bottom of it? Because I've had this curiosity about it forever. It wasn't like it happened when it happened, Lily, that I went out and told everyone I know, hey, I'm carrying something and, you know, <laughs> it's going to be really special. That's not my nature in the first place until I'm absolutely positively certain about conditions. The Capricorn in me says, shut up about it until you know. Well, light is being cast upon this situation because I triggered you in some way that caused you to say, there's something else I know we need to get 
through an exchange. And now I'm starting to zero in on it. Had you and Carol not come along, I wouldn't have been able to focus on exactly what it is I'm carrying. And now I really have a comprehension of what that is. Mm -hmm. When I met with the light beings, that was a physical interaction of something that they passed, some energy they passed that day. Mm -hmm. I've been carrying that around with me ever since. It has certainly cracked my DNA open and accessed higher realms of many things. I can see them behind what, now. Yeah, see? <laughs> what I understand I got during my transmission with Yeya, which was a couple months after that, that was the upgrade. That was the piece that allows us to hold this greater light that we're receiving and we're not ready to accept and the ability to translate higher frequencies. That's what you were drawn to. That's what Carol was drawn to. So now that I understand what it is, it's less like I had this vision in my head that I'm, you know, wielding this thing out there and you guys are getting wind of it and I don't have any freaking idea what it is. <laughs> You're going to help me put some more um, clarity to that because you two were just the first two. There's been a parade of people that have, you know, heard the Lemurian call and have reached out. But you two were the most important ones because I've been around you long enough to know that there isn't really, in my mind, anything that you needed to get from me. You guys, I love watching your journeys and the people that you draw, and I'm just part of it. It's when I left Grafton, there was something that Yeya said <clears throat> during the end of the transmission that explained what we're all doing because we're all connectors. My job is to take the hub of people that I know and the information I know and connect it to Lily. And by means, Lily's hub now shares all that cosmic information as well. We're all on the same wavelength. Holy cow, watch the tribe assemble and everybody keeps showing up. It's been incredible. Good morning, folks. Today, we welcome the return of the king. The massive Sunspot group is back, and it announced its arrival with a massive blast. An approximately X3 solar flare erupted spectacularly from its position at the incoming limb. Let's dive right in. Last 24 hours on the sun had been quiet. Hope you enjoyed that quiet while it lasted. The filaments remain stable, the big northern spots still bide their time, and geomagnetic conditions at Earth are fairly calm. We had been awaiting the return of these massive sunspots and they made themselves known this morning with a phenomenal reignition of the X-ray production flaring. Let's watch the eruption blast plasma here at the southern incoming limb. Happy Memorial Day, everyone, and we remember indeed. Let's keep our fingers crossed it's just getting its rage out before spinning in to face the Earth again. The face of the sun contains only those same sunspots we saw yesterday, very quiet while at the south incoming. We can't even really see those big spots yet, but we will be watching and we'll get back to you with any updates if needed. We're going to also quickly mention here a big earthquake struck Tonga yesterday, magnitude 6.6. .6. Luckily, it was deep without much surface damage.
jump. Oh my board, Jesus. Look at those. Roll the window down. Give it back to Matt. Matt, Matt. Wood farms. They're parallel it. This road will F. Okay, it's going back right? Yeah.
Hey, okay, so um, Craig had mentioned, like, how do we stay in unity, and my mind kind of went to, like, you know, being in the physical 3D with each other and brushing up on each other's energies and feeding off of it. And then Jackie mentioned something about um, abundance in the starseed community, and I think it's going to take a lot of starseeds learning how to receive abundance, and I feel like we have a difficult time with that. So do you guys have any good advice for starseeds on how to receive so that we can start coming together more often? We can afford to get together and and move to the right places together so that we can get this thing going. I'm talking about financial abundance. I, I mean, whatever it takes to get people in the places. I mean, right now, today, yeah, it would be financial. Financial abundance. Well, who's up? You. You are. You. <laughs> Literally. You. No, the, okay, so this is something I had to super work through big time. So I'll just be completely vulnerable because when my abilities first came through, I was like, how could I ever charge for this? And then I read the raw material. And I understood that if I give of myself and it takes from my own family, my own ability to do this long term, then I'm actually putting all of the energy into negative to a deficit. So we have to charge for what we're doing so that we can keep doing it. And that was a massive breakthrough for me. It was like, okay. And then it was like, well, what's a fair rate? Well, there's such a spectrum, right? So then it was like, okay, at some point in there, you have to make a connection to higher guidance and start asking for help. But the biggest thing first is to recognize that if... <sighs> Hold on. I always ask exact right words, exact right way for the exact right people. We need money and influence in each person in this room's hands. And it's not an abundance thing at all. You're a channel. And you're either open to that channel or you're not. And if you don't allow that channel to flow through you, the bottom line is you will not continue to be able to do this without causing a negative detriment in yourself or your family. And this is something funnily that I approach the guys with. And I was like, just let me help you. Please, just let me help you. Just let me build your website. Come on, we got to get more people here. Because the more people that are here in these rooms, the bigger the message gets. And so if you hold back on pushing sales, let's say, then how are you going to fill the room? How are you going to get your message out? So you got to break away from all of the stigma that we've been taught. Because for a long time, wealth and influence has been in the hands of nasty people or a lot of money goes into super dark things. That doesn't make money bad. It's just our stigma around it. And honestly, I couldn't relate to Jerry Moore when I was like, I don't even get money. My husband and I were talking about it. It was like, oh, we needed $30,000 for a freaking fence, which is ridiculous. And I was like, all right, I'll go get it. 11 days later, I was like, all right, we got 30 grand. I earned it. I earned it. I did things to earn it. It came to me because I don't care. Because I understand it's nothing about my worth. It's There's no positive or negative. It's just a flow. And that's the one thing that I would offer is you got to release the judgment of what it is and understand it's just one channel out there and let it flow through. And that if you don't allow it, you could put yourself into the negative. So all of that positive work you're doing is almost transmuted. Like, we got to build the positive. Yeah. I can't believe I just answered that question. Alexa.